Look, it's not often I use my powers to make a promise on this show, to guarantee our listenership, our, our, the fantasy players out there, you know, good fortune. But I'm, I'm going to make the guarantee right now. I, This is the year no catastrophic injuries in preseason games. Wow. I'm making oh, that that in the actual games? In yeah. the games. I, I mean, Oof. that's pretty bold. But I'm going to go out on a limb. Because not, there will be none. Right. <laughs> the NFL and the NFLPA have agreed to zero preseason games. We were talking before the show, Jason. You know, a lot of the way fantasy owners, uh, commissioners, leagues navigate their draft schedule, like when they're going to actually, you know, get together, or maybe this year it's going to be a Zoom draft. But you navigate it almost by that benchmark of that third, fourth preseason week, mm-hmm. trying to avoid that. Uh, you know, you hear the stories of, you know, we've had a draft right in the middle of, I think it was preseason week three one time because it just lined up. That was the only time we could get together was right in the middle of the games. And pl- players are going to get hurt. Yeah, that's true. But players get hurt in camp. Players get hurt, um, you know, in, in practice. So that will still be happening uh, during the time. And because the, the schedule has been moved up, I would still recommend you push your draft as as late as possible, late August, early September, uh, kickoff of week one, I believe, is September 10th. Which could very well, I mean, it's probably going to be that date, but it could be pushed back too. Yeah, so assuming it's it's then, um, I would say right there, that August, September changeover, that's where you want to aim for your drafts. Uh, avoid the players that do get injured in, uh, in camp and practice and have your rosters ready to go. Yeah, dra- draft timing is all about just trying to create the best uh, level playing field so people aren't, you know, you draft in week one, two or three, four players get injured, and it really disrupts. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. it's not fair. It's not. It, it's really it's really sucky when it's like you you draft your team, and before anybody has played, your team is different now. I don't. I lost player X, Y, or Z, and nothing has been played yet. I didn't get anything at them. There, uh, and maybe we should talk also about some of the things we've done in our league of record because this is happening every day. You know, we're having these discussions about how to adjust your league for COVID and the coronavirus and what's taking place in player safety. We talked about the IR spot and some of those updates on the last episode of the show. Today, we, we're in a keeper league. So we had a discussion on, you know, in our league today about what if, because you have to have the what if. I mean, what if, that's the, the banner of 2020 is it not it's 2020 yeah. colon what if because everything that seems to be able to happen has happened what if you don't have a complete season how do you look to the future for draft order and things like that and we made a decision to vote on kind of when we de- would declare a winner you know if there were eight games in an nfl season this year we're willing to declare a winner and then use those standings in reverse for draft order next year. Right, and it's really unique for keeper leagues because yes. if you're in a redraft league, it's you know so it's, it's not going to make a big difference. And if you're in a dynasty league, you're you're it's much easier to deal with this. You you know you go by what the NFL is doing. But in a keeper league where you have draft pick trading, you know, and people are stacked in this year's draft and they're getting getting the early round picks, you do have to kind of have that threshold. Eight games is what we're going with. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things we'll help walk everyone through as we get closer to the season, some best practices for your leagues to set up and what we recommend. And, and we would also love to hear what you are doing in your leagues. Um, you know, sometimes we get feedback and we're like, that's a brilliant idea. And we can disseminate that information out to, uh, thousands of fantasy football fanatics. Oh, Hey, wasn't expecting you. Thanks for watching the video. You should check out the long form, the hour. Check it out. Subscribe to the Fantasy Footballers channel.